Dave Rendo, Steve here. And Larson. And it's time for another Guess the Melter Retro thing. Ratings. We're guessing star ratings. Dave Melter didn't pass. We're going to do these a little differently because, I don't know, we're going to try something different. We're going to do one one person's going to guess per show rather than both of us. Yeah. So it's more like when we do the star ratings for current shows. Yeah, we do the star ratings for the current shows. One person's in the hot seat. And so with these retro ones, in order to streamline the process, uh, and to be honest with you, get more value out of this taping, uh, we're going to do, hey, look, man, you got to hustle. Uh, we're going to do today. Who's going to be, who do you, do you want to be? You're, you're clearly, I have no idea what the points are right I'm now. I'm way ahead though. The last two weeks I've wiped the floor with you. You know what? I will acknowledge you, Larson, that you won whatever that round one is. Now that we're doing it different, now that we're doing it different. You acknowledge me. I'm putting up my one. I'll put my one up too. Clean slate, starting from scratch. Oh, see, you want to start over. Kind you want of, to refresh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. So, fine, uh, fine. If that's the case, then I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to start off on the right foot. You can go first. Oh, I have to guess first? You have to guess oh, first. Oh, I don't want to do that. You don't want to set the table? I don't want to set the All table. Right, I'll go. I'll go first. Come you on, set to the me. table. All right, here we go. Docs. Guess the Meltzer. All right, here we go, Larson. Once again, uh, mine sort of started out kind of themed, but uh, th then they sort of just evolved into not themed. Very at all. well, stream okay. of consciousness picks. That's yeah. what I expect. All right, so first up, we're going to take a look at one of the most convoluted WrestleMania main event builds of all time, and that is, of course, WrestleMania 1997. Somehow, some way, Stone Cold Steve Austin won the Rumble and probably should have faced Bret Hart in the main event of WrestleMania. But the powers that be were like, nah, nah, I'd rather. Well, it's because Stone Cold actually both his feet hit, and so they had to go back and redo that, all that. Yeah. It convoluted. Mix. It was convoluted. Undertaker versus Sid. So today we're going to look at it because I know you know what the star rating is for Austin versus Bret Hart. Five stars. Five stars. Beautiful match. It's pretty good. Make things a little bit more difficult for you. Undertaker versus Sid. Oh, this is not going to be high. Larson. It might be in the negative. Number one, just this is for no points or whatever. Just guess how long was this match? It was like 22 minutes. Oh, my God. Very good. 21 minutes and 19 seconds yeah. of Undertaker versus Sid. And how many of those minutes did Sid have poop in his trunks? <laughs> Uh, famously known as the match that Sid might have crapped his pants. Uh, so here's what Dave Meltzer had to say about this main event match. Shawn Michaels came out to do commentary and got the big ring entrance. Right in front of the cameras, Michaels did the NWO for life sign. The next night on WCW's Nitro, Kevin Nash said uh, on the air as he was making to the ring for his interview, HBK right back at you. Before the match started, Bret Hart came out and yelled at Michael, saying he was a pussy and a faker. <laughs> Dave, language, please. Yeah, come on now. Uh, let's see here. Yelled at The Undertaker, saying that when he slammed the door on him last Monday, he slammed the door on their friendship and told Sid that he knows he's the real champion. Wow. What Side a, note. What a heel turn from Bret. Side note. Um, this just sounds like an episode of Raw. Because, like, Raw, like, there all sorts of shit was going on on Raw yeah, before. Yeah, it just yeah. seems like that. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, the whole pay-per-view did, for the most part. Uh, let's see here. Sid wound up powerbombing Brett, and they took him out. Then the match started. Undertaker and Sid each put forth more effort in this match than they did in their regular arena matches or in their big pay-per-view matches years back when Hogan was champion. But, sti but Sid still can't work. Sid did slam Undertaker through a table and smashed his back on the ring post and followed with a long camel clutch. You know the saying that it was so quiet you can hear a pin drop? Well, in this case, it was so quiet you can hear a spot called. Sid controlled almost the entire match, which told you he was doing the job at the end, although it was almost all rest holds. Both threw kicks to the face simultaneously. Description, description, description. At this point, Hart showed back up and hit Sid twice with a chair. Undertaker smashed Sid's back into the post and gave him a chokeslam for a near fall. After a blown spot, Sid hit the powerbomb. Hart came back out again and got into it with Sid, ending when Hart snapped Sid's neck down on the top rope and Sid staggered into a tombstone for Undertaker's win. Match ended with Hart and Undertaker glaring at each other. They've done an incredible job this year, destroying the credibility of the title 
with all the run-ins and screw jobs in every title match, which probably explains why the title matches mean so little in TV ratings. What wow. was the star rating for this match? I mean, he said they worked better than they had before, but Sid still can't work. Contradiction right there from well, those no, that's other guys. Well, no, that's Sid's entire career, maybe. Yeah. I'm going to say one and three quarters. Uh, one and one quarter. Oh, half star off. No half point. Star I almost off. went one and a half. So close. So, so close. close. You're so, so close. close. So close. Sid still can't work. All right. Next up, we're going to go into the future to Survivor Series of 2003. All right. I was actually looking for uh, the first elimination chamber thing. Uh, but uh, I thought it was 2003. It's 2002. Yeah. But I, I was looking at Survivor Series 2003. You didn't want to go back to the previous Survivor Series. <laughs> no, I just right, stayed here because we had Bill Goldberg versus Triple H. Oh yeah. For as Dave Meltzer calls it, the Raw title. Yeah. So here's what Dave Meltzer has to say about this. Goldberg speared him before the bell. I'm assuming him as Triple H. Mm -hmm. He beat on Triple H until giving him a press slam where his bad ankle gave way. Flair gave Goldberg a knee drop and beat on his ankle. A funny spot was them getting all mixed up doing a half crab spot. That sentence sounds like my kid wrote it like five years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a funny spot was them getting all mixed up doing a half crab spot. So apparently there's got humor in this match. Triple H nailed Goldberg with Nux after Earl Hebner was squashed in the corner. When Goldberg kicked out, Triple H dropped an elbow on Hebner. He went for the sledgehammer. Goldberg got the sledgehammer and went wild, nailing Flair, Orton, and Batista. This gave Triple H a shot at the pedigree, but Goldberg powered out. Goldberg teased hitting Triple H with a sledgehammer, but instead threw it out of the ring and pinned him after a spear and jackhammer. If they had introduced him like this, he'd have done big business for them. What was the star rating? Dave Meltzer gave this match. It seemed like it would be terribly high. I'm going to go with two stars. Two and a half stars. Wow. So close. Man. So close. Oof. Oof. He seemed fairly enthusiastic about the affair. To a degree. To a degree. To a degree. That last sentence to me, I thought would have given it. Yeah, I don't know what would have done with that anyways. Uh, moving on to. Well, here's the thing is I, as soon as you say what the match was, I'm saying, all right, two stars is what I'm starting with and nothing that he wrote there. Maybe you think it was much Move, different. Moved than that. you off no, that it one. Didn't really All move right. me off. No. Fair enough. Moving on to WrestleMania 21. I was there for this match. Oh. Big time match. Yeah. Huge match. Massive. Of course, I'm talking about John Cena versus JBL. Oh. Uh, to for the WWE title. I thought you were talking about Kurt Angle versus Shawn Michaels. That's why I was leading you down that path, and then I swerved. You did. You did swerve me. Five star swerve. Big pop. Some blame the sumo match for the crowd being dead. I almost gave you Big Show versus uh, Aki Bono. Oh. But then I saw this, and I'm like, this is a bit more. Because that was like a really small write-up. I think he gave it like a dud. Yeah. John Cena pinned JBL to win the WWE title in 11 minutes, 26 seconds. Some blame the sumo match for the crowd being dead here. But I'm sorry. When you've built up a match for months, that's no excuse. JBL kissed the belt in a manner before the match that pretty much gave the finish away. JBL brutalized Cena early. Cena showed nothing, but part of it was the match layout, which gave him a chance to show nothing. Yeah, you're as confused as I am. It seemed to me they were so afraid of Cena looking bad on his big night. I guess showing nothing is no selling like he didn't sell it, I guess. It seemed to me they were so afraid of Cena looking bad on his big night that it was put together so that he couldn't help looking bad. Interesting. JBL's offense was good, but the crowd was into it. JBL even came off the top and was caught in a power slam. Finish saw Cena duck the clothesline and hit the FU. What is the story? Wow. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's all over the map, as they say. I'm going to go two and a quarter. One and a quarter. Wow. He dog shit. He said that match was dog shit. Wow. Bad match. Bad match. Bad match. Bad performance so far for me. Not great, but you can uh, salvage it. You got two more matches I here. I do. I do. All right. WrestleMania 27. Your favorite match of all time. Michael Cole versus Jerry Lawler. Oh, God. Yeah, man. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, oh, this match is so bad. It's really bad. It's really bad. 
Meltzer says, They brought out Booker T and Jim Ross to announce. Cole was wearing a wrestling singlet and wrestling headgear all orange. He wasn't trying to get Taz mad, but he went to Syracuse and their nickname is the Orangeman. Looking like he was out of Diary of a Wimpy Kid. (laughs) Big pop from Larson. That's a pretty funny reference. Cole said Ross had the second biggest ego in sports entertainment. He then said Lawler had the biggest ego, saying Lawler and Ross were both overweight, overrated, and over the hill. Jack Swagger came out, and Austin tried to run him over in his Jeep when he came out. Cole ran into the coal mine. This all happens before the match actually starts, too. I've you are correct. Memory serves. Yeah, well, we're getting to the start of the match. Uh, into the coal mine and was stalling in the box. He was doing squats and fake jumping jacks. Trivia note, the exercise jumping jacks are believed to have been invented by a pro wrestler. He doesn't clarify who. But who? Uh, Lawler attacked Swagger and threw him into the post and in the barricade. Cole was in the coal mine begging off, asking Lawler for forgiveness. He went to shake hands through the handy opening that allows for this spot. Lawler agreed to shake hands and the crowd booed. He did the the not let go deal and pulled Cole's face into the glass five times. They actually got into the ring at the 245 mark of the match. Cole went to the middle rope for a Vader reverse splash, then climbed to the bottom rope and did it off the bottom rope. Uh, Lawler selling went too long and led to the match dying and some cat calling. Cole pulled down a strap, put on the ankle lock. Lawler was selling this lousy looking ankle lock. It wasn't quite Hogan selling for Jay Leno, but it wasn't far off either. <laughs> Lawler kicked him off and made a comeback. Lawler was stomping Cole in the corner. Swagger threw in the towel. Austin ignored it. Booker T explained, it's sports entertainment, not boxing. It's acting. Austin threw the towel back at Swagger. Swagger came in, argued with Austin, who gave him a stutter. Lawler made the comeback with punches on Cole, uh, including hitting a real good drop kick at 61 years of age. Lawler pulled down a strap and used a fist drop, but picked Cole up at two. Fans were signaling for a pile driver, but that move is banned unless you were Undertaker, Kane, or Triple H. You know, because they used it first or something. <laughs> Snarkiness. Yeah. Lawler used the ankle lock. Cole was tapping like crazy, and Austin ignored it. He was screaming, I give, and finally Austin called for the bell. Notable that with all that damage, that the next night on Raw, he didn't even bother to limp. What star rating? Dave Meltzer give this debacle of a match. Negative two. One star. Get the fuck out of here. Gave it a whole star. How is that possible? There's nothing entertaining about it. It took up like a half hour. That whole thing. It did. Took up a half hour of WrestleMania. It was awful. It was dog shit. It was awful. Dog Dog shit. Dog shit. All right. We're going to fast forward later into that same card. And we've got The Miz versus John Cena. All right, this and this a right here serviceable match. is thematic because right now, of course, The Rock is et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, Miz versus John Cena for the WWE title. Uh, Meltzer says, they did two long video features, which given the time constraints they were under, probably didn't need to be done. They were great videos, but there really is a priority here, a priority problem here in the sense that the TV people seem to think the promotional videos is the product and not the adjunct to the product. The Miz video showed him watching tapes of Hogan, Flair, Rock, and Austin and trying to tell you that Miz is the next generation. They are working so hard with him. It's going to be interesting in a year to see if it works or if they give up, which I honestly don't know which one it is. I still don't know. (laughs) I think his having real-world cred outside of wrestling is going to put him in the Triple H position where they give him shot after shot because they believe in him. I don't think that happened. That's not what happened. Cena did a video talking with all the photos of him growing up. He was talking to photos. Uh, they Then they had a gospel choir sing his entrance music. It was like a K-1 entrance. Cena was booed heavily. Miz was mostly booed, but he got more cheers than Cena. Match started with some light Miz is awesome chants. They went for near falls early and the crowd wasn't reacting. This was quickly starting out like the Triple H versus Randy Orton match that ended the show two years ago although it actually ended up being worse. Oh. Cena got a near fall after a leg slice off the top. Crowd didn't care. Cena missed a charge. Cena went for crossbody, Miz ducked, but the whole spot was mistimed and looked like low-rent indie work. Cena was draped over the apron. Miz did a running knee lift. Jim Ross mentioned it was a million-dollar knee lift in Atlanta. Uh, He continues on about Mr. Wrestling, too, somehow. 
Cena came back with shoulder blocks and the booing was loud. The ref was looking at fixing the turnbuckle and Cena got Miz into a small package, but the ref was late counting. No crowd reaction to this either. Cena hit the attitude adjustment, but no ref. Alex Riley hit Cena with a briefcase. Cena kicked out of the near fall. Some people cheered as kicking out and others booted, but it was the first time in the match you could even hear anyone cheering for Cena. Hmm. Rock came out. Before he can say anything, the general manager dinged. This led to Rock throwing the computer on the ground, and Rock said, this is WrestleMania. Nobody wanted to see a double countout, so he was ordering it restarted. No DQ, no countout, no time limit. As they both got in the ring, Cena got Miz up for the attitude adjustment, but Rock hit rock bottom on Cena, and Miz pinned him. The crowd didn't really react the finish as they were confused. They were happy Cena lost. They were happy Rock got back at Cena, but it was such a heel move that they didn't cheer it either. Miz was celebrating in the ring, and Rock started punching him around and gave him a spine buster in people's elbow to end the show. Boy, he really did take over that one. Yeah, he? he did. He didn't like that at all. What star rating did Dave Meltzer give this match? There's a lot to digest there. There is. It was worse than the Triple H Orton one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This was no reaction. Worse. He doesn't like it when there's no reaction. He likes heat. He likes crowd reaction. Engagement. I'm going to say one and a half stars. You're on the board. You got one point. It was one and a quarter. One and a quarter. Wow. One and a quarter. You picked a lot of winners there. For that one. You know, I try. I Look, man, I tried a little bit harder to find some matches, maybe. Oh, who am I kidding? I just found matches. and I You just found them. matches. You All just right. Bad I got a point. I just right. had a bad day. You yeah. had one point. Let's see in the next episode of Guess the Meltzer. As we play footsie with each other. I think that was my foot. Guess the Meltzer. Uh, if I can best you. Next week. Here at Friendo Club Wrestling. Goodbye, everybody.